Very we much. first shared a conversation almost three years ago to the day, about a month off maybe. How has your vision of what a Blackwater's debut album was going to be changed in that time? Hmm, it's a good question. Very good question. I don't know. I, I think when we started writing the album, we didn't have any, we didn't use anything old, you know what I mean? It was all kind of written through the pandemic. Um, so I guess that kind of led the way, didn't mm. it? But I mean, I guess we would have expected it back in the day, we would have expected it to be a bit more um, punky as yeah. such. So right. Also back then, we didn't even really have it in our sights. Obviously, we mm. wanted to do an album, but like what it would actually be, yeah. what, what it's become is definitely not. I don't think we would have pictured it. No, definitely Technically. not. Technically, yeah. When did what the album is now first come into view? When did it first start to take the shape that it now currently has? What do you, what do you mean? With the In terms sense. of the sound of it and the feel uh, of it and how it was going to kind of all fit together, at what point did you first start to get a clear picture of what that was going to be? I remember it. I think it was just when we started playing with synths on top of it. It was as simple as just putting like a lead line on a synthesizer on top of the guitar line. And then over time, I guess we explored with that and Ollie got, you got a reface. Mm. You know, I had like a MS-20. And like, yeah, we were just playing around whilst we, whilst we were writing our normal way. Um, and we just naturally fell into this new, new sound that I think is for the better. It's way more exciting, I think, having a synthesizer and like, than just one guitar and, you know. Do you think that like, lockdown was an influence on that? Because that's when I, I got my reface. Exactly, yeah. We were like, we kind of sat more inside yeah. Even though we lived together and we could like shoot off to the studio whenever we wanted. Mm -hmm. well, we used to just down. chill in your room and just like make these little sounds and just, stuff like that. and Just, just playing, not yeah. being like, this is the album. We were just like messing around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then, we, then we applied it to the writing and it, and it really paid off. So yeah, I guess it was, it was natural, natural fun. How did that yeah. excitement that you felt when you brought the synths in compare to when you first started playing together <clears> as a group? Definitely new personally. I've always been like guitar, like bass focused so having something keys based where the sound is like you have your notes and then the sound comes after mm -hmm. almost like guitar and bass is like you, you're playing it and that is the sound even though you can get your sorts of amps and pedals it's like the synth is just everything from do you know what I mean like mm -hmm. drum and bass dirty subs to like super squeaky nice clean leads and stuff it's like in one thing I was saying when, like, we, when we wrote that stuff like the, the album it's like I really felt like we were 16 again. Do you know what I mean? The excitement of like being in a band and making what you want. Um, and we've, we've always made what we want, but like as such as we've, we've got the freedom to do just what we want now. You know, like it's just us running the show. So um, yeah, I think that brought back the same feeling. In the, I don't know if it was the album statement, but the kind of quote that you put surrounding the album, you spoke about how you came together as a band playing a Kings of Leon cover in college. Mm -hmm. What songs of your own do you feel, when you look back, feel like the most important? What songs feel like kind of landmarks in your progression as a group and feel like you learned something from <clears> really <throat> pivotal to where you've got to today? I straight away would say Forget Myself. We weren't huge on it when we first released it. it we were kind of convinced to release that song um, by like old managers and stuff like that. And, and to be honest, like, I do thank them for it because when we hear it live now, like it still feels very much from us and it still has like the bite of black waters that we're used to. Um, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say Forget Myself was definitely a staple for me. Cause it's also a bit more electronic and mm. you know, like it just sounds a bit more electronic compared to like when we were 16 and just, just a guitar band. So I'm doing that for guitar. <laughs> 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 Proves how much I just sing. Um, but yeah, I think that Good Times perhaps just cause it- The older, know, older, older songs, definitely off. Good Times. And fuck yeah, like, they're just so, they were just, that's what, they were staple songs, especially when we were, used to play this, like live, way more. Mm -hmm. but I think the, the newer stuff, All the Wrong People, and Something Good and Lost Time are like, you know, the start of the album, end of the album, that is like, encapsulates mm -hmm. all of it. I think it's such a good beginning and a good end of the album, so you need to sit through all of it to get the best bit. So. But, skip, skip, um, skip, 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 play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the songs that kind of falls somewhere in the middle is Home Is Where The Heart Is track seven or something, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask about the recording process for that one and how it came together, because it does have a slightly different aesthetic to the rest was, of the record. That was Completely. actually a really nice day. Yeah, but the demo, <laughs> wasn't it? If we talk a bit about the that. The demo was, or the actual... The demo was full band, wasn't it? You know? Yeah, originally it was actually we were recording and just writing in Max's room. Mm -hmm. um, I think I was playing guitar. You were playing 
I can't you recall, maybe the acoustic. Someone was playing an electric drum kit as well. And it, so it originally had this kind of swingy, like... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we just like stripped it back to the guitar part. David, David tweaked it and did his own kind of thing with it. Mm -hmm. And then it was just like... It stood out too much from the other music in a sense that it seemed like more of an older us. Mm -hmm. So then we were taking it to an acoustic like level. I think it really suited the kind of whole premise of the song as well. Like it's all kind of written about, mm. it was all written about the time that we spent together in that house and like the yard parties we used to have and like the, just how it always just kind of one kind of blink of a memory. But like it was, it's got a really nice message to it that home is where the heart is in it. And you know, we all had like such a good time living together. So the lyrics are definitely the main front of it. So yeah, rather mm -hmm. than it being a big, loud, heavy song, stripping it back just makes it more raw. Yeah, it let the sure. lyrics breathe through a bit more, I think. So. Mm. But recording it, we actually went to Encliffe Park. Yeah, it says what? live on Ecky Road, but we're not on the road. It is, it is, it is Ecky Road. But it is, yeah, but we're not sat on the side of the yeah. road, like, because it's literally just too loud. But. We just took a laptop out with one mic. David and Max were both sat with the guitar singing in between it. So, like, those bird sounds and stuff you hear, they're actually natural. Yeah, it's really it's nice. No, they're not, like... I mean, there's some of them. Added in, they're very much there. Yeah, it's there. One take. Got people it? walking past and like bikes and stuff going. And it's just like it was like twelve takes or something. Wasn't yeah, we it? one by a river and then there was too much like shh noise, so we went and cleared into some more trees. And, was, yeah. and then we all got a rap. Exactly. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> you mentioned the idea that, that, that in that song you you very much allow the lyrics to shine through. How do you do that when you're still playing full band? Um, like that's a very direct way of doing it. How, what sort of techniques can you use when you're playing for a band to make sure that they're never ever shadowed? I think I think that depends on the lyrics. I mean, if you take "Let the Good Times Roll" for example, like the lyrics are. I mean, it's just very observational and very kind of. I don't know. I'm. It's like I like a mantra. The, say it again. It's like a mantra. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The the chorus, yeah. But like in the verses, I wouldn't say there's much for me that really I can relate to anymore. But with the new songs, and I, I think they're just a lot more real in terms of what I'm saying. So I think that that allows it to breathe through a lot more personally. I'd like to think so anyway. And, and actually yeah. choosing what songs in the live set. Mm -hmm. like you can't play all of your songs. No. You have to choose the ones that are most appropriate, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't, I don't know, maybe like hometown shows and stuff, it might come out, but mm -hmm. if you want to keep people excited or keep the energy up, wouldn't just drop down for the song just for the sake that it's on the album. Yeah. It's so important though, you know, I think, that people actually understand the lyrics and instead of just... I don't know, but yeah, we, we sort of just sang about having a good time being pissed off a lot of the time, which is great, but, you know, I kind of... Lockdown was so hard for a lot of people, including myself sometimes, and, you know, like everyone went through it. But I, yeah, so yeah, I just think that's important that that shines through and people know what you're, you know, thinking and experiencing. One of the other things I know you've spoken about, and we're kind of skirting around the edges of it here, is you mentioned the idea that your music very much looks at how you deal with emotions at that period in your life. Mm -hmm. How do you think the way that you deal with your own emotions has kind of changed with time over the course of the last seven years? Still learning, I suppose. Well, I guess you learn until <laughs> you drop dead, really, but I don't know. I think... It's a good question, Alex. <laughs> How do it's we deal question. with our emotions now instead? As opposed Compared to, to when the band started. <laughs> I okay. think we've just learned. We've, some, we've you know, been together for seven years, so we've come such a long way. We've been through a lot together in terms of, you know, like the, the shows we played and the, the people we've recorded with and whatever. And I think the whole thing that just brings it all back together is the four of us, do you know what I mean? So I think that's what kind of, that's what pushes me to connect to it again, yeah. Yeah, I don't really know how to explain yeah. that too well, but. It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, I think just, just realizing what you're doing is ridiculous. You're, you're trying to be songwriters mm. and that's ridiculous to, as a job. So let's just have fun and write what we, you know, just, just release what we want to release and it feels yeah, better. Yeah, it seems like it's quite a liberating thing once you kind of, yeah. Make that observation. If you follow your gut, yeah, I guess it, it totally is. So, yeah. Just growing up, being more mature. The music's definitely more mature. I mean, I don't think we'd write another fuck yeah. Mature. Mature. <laughs> <What's> mature? <laughs> growing up. But, like, yeah, I don't think another fuck yeah would come out anytime soon, basically. Yeah. Mm. Has what the word punk means to you changed in the last few years? Yeah. I, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. I would hate to, I would hate to like, 
I always thought it was a bit cringy calling yourself a but I guess we were a punk band, you know, we were mm. like the sound loud of punk. and it was we were the sound of punk, yeah, but we didn't you know, yeah, we were students and we dust around, but I don't know, we weren't punks. But we were definitely playing, you know, loud, raucous music and whatever. So I guess that's the first thing that we latched on to. But you know, it was I guess it was just a, a mood and an environment, wasn't yeah. it, to, to feel like punk. But it's a very brash term, I think, <laughs> you know. Do you feel this album more reflects where you've been or where you're going as a band? Going. Mm. Come on, I think. Oh, actually, <laughs> that's a hard, that's a hard. Lyrically, where we've been, 100%. Like, oh, yeah, okay. Lyrically, definitely. I mean, the whole, the album's just about, like, growing up in general and being thrown into the industry from, like, as young musicians and you know, going through the whole thing and then coming out the other end and being happier, kind of, by ourselves, but following our own footsteps. So, I'd say before. But then sonically? Sonically, after. Sonically, <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the future, you know, of course, because we've just brought in all these synthesizers. Different arrangements, doing it ourselves as well. Mm. I don't think we, have we actually released anything before this album that we recorded ourselves? Was this also produced? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. didn't realise that. Yeah, man. Yeah, but so it's... We did a... Uh, it's totally new. We did drums at Warren's studio, mm -hmm. and then everything else we did at home. Literally in the bedroom. So it's yeah. so... That's why it feels like such a personal debut album. It's because it was written about our experience together, recorded in our old house, so, it, you know, it's like you can't really get more hands on the, the real thing, what was going on, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Awesome. Alex. Cheers. Cool. Thank you, man. Thank you.